Now, when you say to the South African government, why have you created a climate in this country in which our children can be shut down in the streets by a policeman and that policeman can get away with it? Craddock is a special kind of place. Craddock had a history of cultivating leadership in ways that not all of us have. Craddock was rooted. People were connected with the community. And the leaders in that sense were leaders embodying that tradition of struggle with total absolute integrity. It's not just that they were good at talking to the people, organizing the people. They were good at teaching the people. And so what began in Craddock as a seed of unselfish leadership, sowing into people's minds and hearts, making clear that what Craddock wants is dignity and freedom, liberation, equality, justice, and to have the joy of living as a human being. That seed was planted everywhere. Rituli and Kalata were cut from the same cloth, almost literally from the cloth. They were both religious leaders, but it was a religion that wasn't simply striving for perfection of the soul, for an afterlife. It was a religion very immersed in the pains and the energies and the strivings of the people. It was a religion that paid enormous attention to the theme of the equality of everybody under the skin in the eyes of God. I wish he was better known in South Africa now because Mandela didn't come from nowhere and even Tambo didn't come from nowhere. There was an earlier generation that had those special qualities and I would say Lutuli and Kalata were in that, uh, in, in that mold. Kredok is what it is because of Reverend Kala. That's a, that's a big statement. Yes. In fact, he built Kredok. Kredok is what it is now because of Reverend James Arthur Karat. We didn't know that we were different mothers and different fathers. We just knew that we are this couple's children. But he had a very good relationship with his grandfather. Wherever Tato wanted anything, he will only remember one person in the house, and that was Spot. Tato used to spoil him. There was no jealousy among ourselves because some would say one is Mamo's favorite, one is Sintiki's favorite, one is whoever's favorite. You know, so it didn't bother us. He had a choir there, known as the Congress Choir. He used to make concerts. And they used to go around and collect money. And that money was used to help the education of those parents who cannot afford to pay for their children. Not only church songs, but also political songs. Tina Siswe is one of his compositions. He grew up in politics because Utato, who raised him, was the general secretary of the ANC. When Ford was born, Utato was involved in the Rivonia trial. From prison, Utato knew that a son was born for him. He participated strongly 
uh, he played with uh, the theories and philosophies because obviously if you come from a background of a family of educated people and also people with a struggle background, you were better equipped than the likes of us, especially if you pick that up. Apartheid was not a joke. It was a vicious system. And racial segregation in those areas, it was effective. Any farmer could round you up. If he wants to beat you, he could beat you. If he wants to take you and go and lock you up or request the police to keep you in jail for as many days as he wishes, they would do that. When Matthew Goniwe came to Cradock from Graf Renet, coming to start to be a principal, they started simply by doing basic stuff, you know, to organize the young people to see the importance of education. Would listen to Radio Freedom in the evening at six o'clock, would listen to Radio Namibia at seven o'clock and nine o'clock. Um, the swap was rendering at the time. And then immediately after that, there's going to be discussions in terms of what has been the message. This is Radio Freedom, the voice of the African National Congress, South Africa's time-tested revolutionary movement, born of the people into the front line, to spearhead the people's struggle for the seizure of power from the oppressed. Those little towns were no go areas for political talk. To have the guys that were moving straight to the sound of gunfire, it was a great thing. It was empowering. <laughs> are very bad, the condition uh, of the roads is uh, really very terrible, and the rentals are pretty steep. Actually, what started the problem in Kredo was a rental problem in a new section of the township when people were supposed to pay rentals ranging from 37 rounds 91. That includes now um, what they call service charges. From 37 rounds 91 up to 84 rents, and that was very, very high by Cradock standards. They categorized the mobilization into the residents association. They categorized into the youth in terms of Cradoya, and then at the time the civic was Cradora. And that's, that's leadership. They did not keep whatever they knew just for themselves. Their goal was not to work so that Craddock could have a special place in history. They thought Craddock is this incredibly privileged place to have all of this, this history, this presence, this leadership, this, the people. What can we do to make other places like Craddock? They're not stopping. They're intensifying their work. They bring in this Credora project they're right inside the UDF. It's a national project now. Credora is no year. The whole thing, the whole country is Credora. The importance of organizing yourselves. They were coming to address and show people what is it that must be done in each and every area. P.W. Bota was angry over the Credoc people because he could not crack the Credoc strike, which was becoming an embarrassment to his government. There was a message from the ANC that Matthew Goniwe and Fort Kalata must go to exile. They will die. They said, if we leave this responsibility, who is then going to lead? They said they are not going anywhere. He had to take Fort Kalata and uh, my daughter Jacobs, Mulelo Goniwe and Matthew Goniwe and lock them up for something like nine months. And he couldn't crack the people. 
Paranoid leaders are dangerous. The paranoia that developed in the man, in the leader, led to the kind of things that they did. assassination precisely because they were honorable and good and admired and, and, and loved. To find out not only that they were tortured, the pathologist report had said that they were tortured with a blowtorch. To die in the manner in which they died, somebody to be cut a hand, somebody to be bent alive, somebody to be shot. That was not just torture. That was a demonstration, a lesson that the people had to learn. The objective was not simply to curb the struggle in that area, but to terrify people everywhere and to show the might and the power of, of, of those in charge defending white supremacy in South Africa. This is what happens to you when you challenge us. This is where the power lies. This is what our power can do. And not only do, we can get away with it. That was the lesson. I want to say to the South African government, do not protect those people. Why have you created a climate in this country in which our children can be shot down in the streets by a policeman and that policeman can get away with it? The racist regime has announced that there's a state of emergency. And what the death of the Cranock 4 did was for us to raise the question, is this a moment to submit or to fight on? And we decided we will never submit. And these people who have killed our husband never got amnesty. So I do not understand why can't they be charged our husbands' lives have to pay for the freedom that they are enjoying today. Sure, but I mean, is it not? I mean, there's that song, um, what is it, The Living Years, Every Generation Blames the One Before. Uh, no, I mean, obviously there were major, um, there were major decisions that were taken. Um, if there may be an argument, a strong argument, that if there wasn't an agreement on some kind of amnesty process, that we wouldn't have had a settlement, that we would have carried on fighting. Uh, what would the consequences of that have been for South Africa and its people? Uh, how many more would have died? I think as, as part of the problem is the nature of our transition, the negotiated uh, settlement. Yeah, so that, that sort of as I said, the price that, that part of the price that had to be paid. Those secret talks defined for us the meaning of our freedom, and it defined for us the meaning of justice. It was not our definition, but it was theirs. The ANC has shown unbelievable disrespect to the sacrifices of our people. I don't know how any leader of the ANC can look your mother in the eye without feeling I must be damned to hell for what I did and am doing.
you can't talk about closure with questions not without answers. I want the truth as hard as it might be or as hurtful as it, it, it might be. We might not go around with a hanging heart, but we cannot forget this thing because it's not over yet. I can see a family tradition. A lot of the religious figure, the chaplain, very correct, very honorable. A lot of the revolutionary, the freedom fighter. And then I see you, the new developing South Africa, asking different questions. But the theme running through is the same. The theme of questioning everything, of challenging, interrogating, the theme of solidarity, uh, of, of dignity, these are the continuities uh, over the generations. Mm.